Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be grilling up Guga's favorite steak, the picanha. The picanha is traditional to Brazilian steakhouses, the churrascarias, and we figured what better way to test this than just do an experiment versus our usual go-to steak, which is a USDA prime grade New York strip. So we're gonna cook both of these up, reverse sear, get them out on the grill, and bring them back here to do a blind taste test at the end and see which one we like better. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So I was down in Miami while Guga was shooting a video a few years back and he was raving about picanha. So he's really the inspiration to this video. So first off, this cut is more of a South America and Brazilian thing in particular. So if you go to your butcher here in North America or elsewhere for that matter, you might be asking for a sirloin cap or a rump cap if your butcher just isn't familiar with the term picanha. But it's gonna be this triangular looking cut and you want to make sure that you get that fat cap on the top. This fat cap is going to add a ton of flavor to the cook. And of course, you can just cut some of it off before you eat it if you want to control the amount of fat that you're eating. But just don't lose out on that flavor. So the first step in preparing this, we're just going to put the fat cap side down and we're going to want to trim off some of this silver skin. So we're just going to get our boning knife in here, trim down here. You don't want to be taking off any of the protein. You just want to be taking off the actual silver skin that isn't going to render down over the course of the cook. Now this is an important step because as you do this, it's also going to reveal the grain of the beef. And we'll get into why that's important here in a minute. Now the next most important step is when you're cutting steaks out of your picanha, you want to be sure that you're cutting with the grain. Now what that's going to let you do is when you're actually cutting into your final steaks, each slice through your steak will be against the grain and that'll result in a really tender steak. You want to be looking at your beef here, you'll see striations going in a certain direction and again, you want to be carving your steaks with the grain. So we're going to go in and carve off steaks that are about an inch to an inch and a half thick here. Because we're reverse searing these, we know they're going to be perfect wall to wall, medium rare, as long as we monitor our temps right. So we don't need to worry about these steaks being too thick. So you can see here, we've lined up the picanha steaks and that really shows how we've been cutting with the grain. You can see the striations of the beef just along each of the steaks. So this is perfect. Let's get this seasoned up. So we've got this beautiful New York strip alongside our picanhas. We're going to season these both up the same way. And we're just going to use some fleur de sel, some sea salt. And this is a really nice flaky salt. And we're going to go on with a generous amount here. What's nice about this flaky salt is it really easily lets you see just how much seasoning you've applied to your steaks, just given how visible it is. Get those in, flip them over. Perfect, so just make sure you get the edges and the fat cap seasoned with some of the extra salt that's just hit the cutting board here. Now with these seasoned up, let's go fire up the grill. So we're out at the Kamado, we're gonna be doing this picanha reverse sear over charcoal for that really rich flavor profile. So first up, we're just gonna fill up our charcoal basket and get this lit up. So we'll get our lid closed down. We've got our vents open just a touch because we're aiming for a temperature on our grill here of between 225 and 250. Now we only used one wood chunk here of hickory and that's because we don't want this to be engulfed in smoke. We just want a nice little woody flavor profile to really enhance the picanha and the other steaks. So we've got our grill up to temp here. The smoke has gone from that really billowing white smoke to that clear blue smoke that we're looking for. Now we'll just crack the lid and we'll get these steaks on. Now you'll notice we've got this set up indirect with the heat deflector down below and we've got our temp probes into the thickest parts of the steaks themselves. These little two nubs there on the side. So with the lid closed here, we're just going to indirectly sear these steaks until they hit an internal of 110. Then we'll get them off, get this grill ripping hot and give them a final sear. So we've just hit an internal temp of about 110 across these steaks. So now we're gonna get them off the grill and resting. And in the meantime, we're gonna get our grill fired up and ripping hot. And that's gonna be the final sear we give to these guys. Now these steaks are 
gray, that's typical for the reverse sear. They're not all that impressive, but once we give them the final sear on the grill here, they're gonna look phenomenal. So we've got the grill up to 425 degrees here. The coals are ripping hot. Took out the deflector plate, opened up the vents. This took about 10 minutes to get this grill ready to go. So now we're just gonna put our steaks down on the grill here and give them one quick, really hot sear. Now we remove these steaks when we hit an internal temp of 110. So we need these to go a little bit further just so that we can achieve that 128 to 130 Fahrenheit that we're looking for that's perfect medium rare. Now flip these over, make sure we're getting a good sear on both sides of these steaks here. Right, so we've just hit an internal of 129 on these guys. So we're gonna take them off and just let them rest before we cut into them. So we've got these steaks in off the grill and they smell absolutely incredible. Really nice crust on these and a beautiful color just from the smoke that absorbed from that hickory chunk that we put it on. Now we did these reverse sear. The other common method for doing picanha is on rotisserie, but this is the more formal way. And we figured given we were gonna do a comparison against a New York strip, we ought to do the reverse sear. So now there's only one thing left to do. That's cut into these guys, see if we got that medium rare we were looking for and do the blind taste test. So we'll just slice in here. Look at how juicy this is. We didn't add any compound butter or anything to this. This is just fat that rendered out. This is gonna be delightful. So on the New York strip, you can see that's beautiful, medium rare, almost wall to wall. Oh, so juicy. Now, as you can see here, we cut against the grain because the steaks were first cut with the grain. And you can see that as you look just at the actual protein here, really nice and tender. These are gonna be short muscle fibers. Just look how juicy that is. So now for the blind taste test, because it's winter, we're putting on the toque. We're coming down like this. Okay, so we've got a piece of the New York strip here sliced up. We've got a piece of the picanha. Now, I'm just gonna get handed a fork that has one of the two on, and it'll be our first taste test. Okay, so now we'll go in here, try this out. Pretty sure I know which one that is, but I'm gonna wait for the second taste test just to confirm. Hmm, that is so good. So I'm gonna guess the first one was the picanha and the second one was the New York strip. And the only thing that I'm basing that on is really the picanha, it just, it was a bit of a different flavor than what I'm used to eating. And that was really more than, than anything. I think the tenderness in the picanha because we cut against the grain was really on point. There was a ton of juiciness because of the rendering of the fat cap. And it really frankly matched the USDA New York strip, which would have had all of that fat just integrated between the muscle fibers in the marbling there. So did I get that right? Was the first one the picanha? You got it. Awesome. Both were super tender, super juicy. And frankly, this one, I'm gonna say this one just comes down to a matter of personal preference. I can see a world where I'm grilling both of these. The family is absolutely gonna love finishing off the rest of this steak here. And we'll get their opinion too, but I'd expect you to see a lot more picanha on this channel coming forward. So if you like this video, give it a like below. If you think we've earned it, subscribe to the channel. As always, we put all the links to the equipment that we use down in the description below. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.